What's up guys, it's Dollmatter Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to the top 5 Warhammer 40k video games and media. So this is from Bricky, we've obviously reacted to quite a few of his videos before, and somebody told me I should check out this one because I was talking about, you know, wanting to look into the different Warhammer 40k games, K video games. Um, obviously we're going to be playing Space Marine at some point, we're going to be playing uh, Adeptus Mechanicus at some point, we're going to be playing... Um, was the other, the Dawn of War at some point, and then there was the new one as well. Uh, oh, Dark Tide, Dark Tide, we're gonna be playing at some point. Um, this video is, I think, about a year old, two years old, uh, so it may be a little behind because I know they have come out with some more recent games that people actually do like, uh, so it'll be interesting. This one's also games and media, so uh, some of these will not be games. Um, but yeah, let's uh, jump into this. Link to the original video down below. And again, Bricky's top five Warhammer 40k video games and media. My name is Bricky, currently running from the law for selling 2.4 terabytes of Commander Shadow Sun pornography. And today we are talking Warhammer, not the Warhammer I just explained, and not even the Warhammer on the tabletop, but in fact, Warhammer in media and video games. Two things that you generally don't see a whole lot of. Warhammer video games <laughs> are not something I would call... Man, Warhammer video games are like, like, say that you don't see a lot of them is insane. As someone who's like, you know, just started getting into this, there is probably a million fucking video games. It's honestly insane. Now, they're definitely not the most popular games. That's undeniable. Like, if I go check, I'll check Twitch right now. Um, if I look at Twitch, I bet you the most popular Warhammer games probably got like maybe a thousand viewers or something. Warhammer 40k. Um, let's see... Yeah, so the most popular uh, one right now is Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War, the original, with 64 viewers. Um, what about... What's the... Not Space Marine. How, how many does Mechanicus have? Uh, Mechanicus has a total of about 20 viewers. Um, what about Dark Tide? Oh yeah, Dark Tide, Dark Tide's actually got 447 viewers, so that's probably the highest. So yeah, it, it, even the most popular Warhammer game only has about, or po popular Warhammer 40k game only has about 500 viewers. Um, but there's a ton of them. Rare. Good Warhammer video games are more rare than a humble Craft Worlds player. Naturally, <laughs> Warhammer games are really difficult to translate as video games from the universe one because of the insane varying levels of power like how can a civilian take on a guardsman trained since birth take on a space marine take on a custodian take on a tyranid like tyrannocyte or a, just a gigantic tyranid monster which then takes on an imperial knight and an emperor class titan and a tyranid bio titan and then you get into the the insane levels of, of the fleets and the naval battles and, and it's just a whole new level armada seems like come another together good game. and fight each other is already ridiculous enough but then you can't do a whole lot with the narrative either because having different influxes of character motivation doesn't really happen in warhammer everyone is so devout to either their cause or they just aren't thinking as in things like tyranids and orcs that have only a singular goal uh, but then you have the imperium and when you're in the imperium i feel like you can make a good ho uh, horror survival game about the tyranids like something kind of what's that one? Uh, I can't I can't remember what it's called. It's really popular though. Um, I know a bunch of my buddies play it, but like you, you you have like f I think it's five people. Four of them are trying to run away from like this like eldritch horror type creature, and it like puts them on fucking spikes, and you can like go try and save them, but like you might be getting baited. Like I feel like they could do something like that with the Tyranid. One person plays as the Tyranid, and the other ones just try to survive. You can't go around being like, you know. Maybe chaos ain't that bad. If you're not 100% Emperor's Graces fully zealotous, then you get shot in the head. So having any kind of like fall from grace or character motivations where they kind of uh, go against their government and, and the masses, doesn't really happen so naturally unless you're doing some kind of like soldiers and brothers in arms story or maybe like a detective story i.e eisenhorn kind of books with the inquisitor it's kind of hard to make a lot of content for it so through all that turmoil though there are some pretty 
good ones and that's what we're going to do today we're going to kind of rank but mainly just discuss the top five warhammer video games as well as talk about three pieces of warhammer media that i think you should probably check out if you're a fan of it at all and they come from different backgrounds so i think it'll be interesting first off let's do that warhammer media part because that's a lot easier to cover i like your hat by the way first up is the astartes fan film if you haven't seen astartes oh like, so good come on what are you doing I'm sure you have because there's a guy. Surprised it's in here though. It's not but, official like, media. One person down there in the comments section is like, "Oh, I hadn't seen a star." He's like, "Good, good, watch it. It's amazing. It's a five-part little series made by I think pretty much one guy. Maybe he has some friends, but I think it's only the one guy. And he made a little fan film about some space marines going and securing some kind of cargo from either some kind of uh, PMC or heretic cultists. I'm thinking it's a PMC. They didn't look fucked up enough. It's not just a simple like ah marines punching elves or punching orcs. That's got a little bit more intrigue to it, and it's a lot more subtle, which I like a lot. Oh, it's it also so good. does a great job at adapting the lore. For a large majority of it, at least in a large majority of games, Space Marines kind of just like walk into battle, doing like a Chad stride, thinking they're so fucking hot shit. When in reality, if you think about a legitimate war zone or something, the Space Marines, while they do look cool walking in, which they do sometimes, they're a lot faster. They run incredibly quickly. They are constantly spoken that, they, that nothing that big should run that quick, and they're very tactical. They take positions. They have orders. They they have not just bolt guns and giant thunder hammers and stuff. There is the good old Astartes combat knife, and it's nice to see all that stuff represented in a much more I say realistic. It's Warhammer, but a realistic way. Pretty much all these things will be in the description, so you know. But definitely worth checking out. It's not too long. Go look at it. Secondly, we actually have a Warhammer film. Now, Warhammer movies, there are a couple of them, and unfortunately, they, they pretty much all suck. Uh, any of the ones <laughs> that you might think, oh, it was, it was okay, it's not. It's, it's probably just the, we have none of them, so the fact that we have anything that has, like, a little bit of effort put into it, you're like, oh, it, it's all right, when in reality, it, it's, it's pretty terrible. It's like really big Resident Evil fans that like the Resident Evil movies. Like, they're not good movies, but I, they can be dumb fun sometimes, I get it. However. Yeah, 100%. There's a lot of movies like that that are, they're not, like, they don't have the best writing, but they're just, like, good, dumb, mindless fun. Like, I, I can't even tell you the story of the Resident Evil movies outside of, like, fucking... There's Umbrella Corporation and a virus got loose. But I've, I've watched all of them and enjoyed them because it's, like, it's just good, dumb fun. Sometimes those movies are fine. You just want to sit on the couch and fucking, you know, get baked out of your mind or, you know, fucking something like that. And just, you know, sit there and watch some, you know, brainless fun. It's, it's good shit. The best Warhammer film... Not it, everything has to be the greatest masterpiece ever written is not even a Warhammer film. Now, there's a film called Event Horizon. It's in 1997 by Paul W.S. Anderson, I believe he was the director. Now, speaking of Resident Evil, he directed a lot of the Resident Evil films as well as I think Alien vs. Predator and a few other things. I don't particularly consider him a, a fantastic director. I think most of his movies are kind of mediocre. That being said, Event Horizon scratches that perfect Warhammer deep space sci-fi horror itch. If you want to take Dead Space, Alien and a bit of Warhammer and mish it to, mish it, mash it together, you have Event Horizon. And the whole purpose of the story is it's far future, and there was a ship of the name of the movie, and that ship was in the orbit of Neptune and it just disappeared. And then, like four years later, it's back. No one knows why. So you're gonna go investigate it. And it is exactly that. It apparently was a big inspiration for the first Dead Space game, and it makes a lot of sense when you do watch the film. But it's very creepy. It's got that awesome part where, you know, not only is there a danger, but you also have the danger of space and all the issues that space comes with. It's not perfect. There are some character motivations or character actions in the first third that I really don't like. And the effects don't always hold up. But for a Warhammer film, it is the best non-intentional Warhammer movie <laughs> you're probably going to get for many years. And I, lo I love how we're fucking, we're, we've done two out of the five. I think he's doing five for each. Um, but yeah, we've done two out of the five for media. And one is a fan-made thing, and one is a literally not a Warhammer movie. Uh, I've never seen Event Horizon, though. I'll have to check it out. Is it actually worth seeing? Last but not least, we have the Emperor Text to Speech series on YouTube. Now, a lot of people asked me when I made my video a bit ago. I, I think I've watched the first, I want to say seven or eight of these. And they are so fucking funny, especially the parts with the Emperor himself just losing his shit. 
so good. But again, this is like not actual Warhammer shit. This is, I mean, like it's, it's fan made. It, like we have, so we have two fan made things and a fucking. <laughs> so, so fucking Games Workshop's really dropping the ball. Hopefully, Henry Cavill can, uh, you know, make something good out of that. Know about Warhammer YouTubers? Why I didn't mention him? Mainly because I want to save it for this video. The text to speech series is a very cute concept. It is just a little Warhammer YouTube episode series where the Emperor gets a text to speech device implemented into his body, and now he can speak to the Captain General Custodium, nicknamed Kitten, because it turns out all the custodians have turned into a gay orgy because they've been stuck there for so long. Which, because of that, <laughs> provides the rarest thing since fucking Bigfoot. An actually good JoJo meme. God bless him, he's done the impossible. It's very cute watching this series because it provides a lot of things. It's obviously a comedy and it's meant to be, but it's a comedy from someone who actually understands Warhammer lore. And in a sense, it's definitely not something you should take as, as gospel, but it does have this like over the top style for most of the characters. For instance, in the series, you have a whole bunch of Mechanicus guys and they fuck toasters. Do they actually fuck toasters in the lore? No, but they are crazed techno <laughs> They're insane. Vulcan is a super nice guy who runs around hugging people. Does he do that in the lore? No, but the Salamanders are known to be a much nicer and caring chapter compared to most space marines. Magnus is a Yu-Gi-Oh loving nerd. Is he actually? No, he's just a fucking nerd. <laughs> Wonderful, it's very funny, and I would highly recommend it. And you do maybe need to slog through the first couple of episodes because they are a bit older and lower budget, but as time goes on, they get really good, especially after episode like 10 ish. Uh, and they're pretty short in the beginning. They get okay, so I've only watched the first, I think, seven or eight, and I've really enjoyed them so far. So the fact that it gets a lot better, that's, that's, yeah, I'm excited for that. Longer later on. So I've already liked highly it. Highly recommend. Give it a watch. It's very funny. And with that being said, let's move on to some Warhammer video games. Who are you speaking to, Father? Damn it, Kroger. Shall close that cavern in your skull before it vomits forth more agglomerations of vexing questions. My skull yields no hollow rock formation, Father. Starting us off at number five for Warhammer video games, we have Space Hulk Deathwing. Now, Space Hulk Deathwing is a fine kind of Left 4 Dead style game. You play as four separate Terminators, and that's what you know Deathwing is. I believe it's Dark Angels chapter, if I'm not particularly mistaken. But you start as Terminators, and you are exploring a Space Hulk. And Space Hulk is basically a big old derelict ship that's gone dark for God knows what reasons. Demons, Tyranids, who knows. So you kind of go through your little Left 4 Dead style thing. You kill a whole bunch of Tyranids is utilizing a whole bunch of weapons and that's kind of your game personally I, I don't think space hulk is a particularly amazing game i think it's good for a good 10 to 15 hours of fun and then it gets a little bit repetitive and you kind of get tired of it but visually it's very well done the look of the plasma and your your power swords and your flamers and the way the tyranids attack you and all it looks very good i like the the very warhammer style aesthetic and the music and they they nail that pretty well um, I do think it's a solid. I've even heard of this one. Short time, but I wouldn't buy it at any kind of full price. I'd get it if you could find it on sale for maybe five dollars and grab a few Warhammer friends. I'd argue that it's at least a, worth a little bit of your time. I don't think it's particularly amazing, but like I said before, Warhammer games are not particularly amazing as, in a, as a whole. So I'm gonna I'm kind of breezing through this one just because it's not a fantastic title but it's uh it's worth at least trying at least checking out a little bit and number four we have warhammer space marine okay now, space marine i've heard is this one's really good very this... fun game that i think people i uh, think a little bit too highly of it's enjoyable and a little more streamlined so if you're just a kind of a regular casual gamer you want to play a fun game and you don't even care it's in the warhammer universe you probably still enjoy this it's a third person shooter combined with a kind of beat em up hack em slash i guess it's more of a beat em up kind of style game where you go around blasting a whole bunch of orcs that have invaded some kind of imperial planet and you also smack them in the face with power swords and stuff and it's pretty damn satisfying at times the gameplay loop is by far the best part of this game it does not ever get old to run up and plasma pistol three orcs in the face and then just start beating the 
ass crap out of them with a whole bunch of Space Marine weapons. It is super fun, it's satisfying, and all of the sound effects really give you that nice, like, crunchy, hardcore Warhammer feel. At this point, you might as well just kind of have your streamlined action game because it works out better with the lore. What's, what's the job? Kill the alien. Cool. The orcs definitely steal the show, I'd say. There's a little bit of chaos in there as well, but the orcs are, are by far more fun. They have that stupid, like, over-the-top cockney accent with a whole bunch of the green skins that it's always funny. The orc war boss in particular is actually, I think, a very, very fun character. I like him quite a bit. Man, I... I love the orcs in, in uh, I was about to say Warcraft and Warhammer, because, like, <clears throat> they do them so unique to, like, any other media I can think of. Like, both in Warhammer 40k and in Warhammer Fantasy, you know, this just, like, kind of funny, dumb battle guys, especially in 40k. It seems, it seems fantasy's a little bit more serious to a certain degree. Um, but, like, if you look at, like, you know, orcs and Tolkien... Obviously, very serious. Orcs in Warcraft, you know, very serious. Um, pretty much any media. Orcs are seen as, like, s kind of serious or portrayed as kind of serious. You know, serious yet bloodthirsty a lot of the time. Um, but, yeah, the, just the, the way that Warhammer does orcs is just, it's so good. I just love the, yeah, like he was saying, the Cockney accent. Um, just the, you know, we want to fight. We'd be fighting. I, I'm terrible at fucking accents, but, you know, wanting to fight and fucking stuff like that. And. Uh, it's just, it's so good. And overall, the game looks very good. I like the, the gothic tech factory that they do. It's kind of hard to pull off, and they did a pretty good job. I think my only downside is that it does have a lot of the early 2000s syndrome when it comes to video games. And by that, I mean extremely railroading linear areas and tons of quick time events tons and if you've played oh, yeah. the game you know there are some really egregious quick time events so that, that was a big problem in the early 2000s because you're talking about like the still like the early days of 3d right um i, I kind of started in the mid 90s but like the 2000s is when you're starting to get like much better graphic 3d so like this kind of stuff and in order to save hardware or software space like on the discs a lot of the time they would have to do shit where it was like super linear, right? You couldn't have open world stuff uh, just because it wouldn't fit on a disc. In certain very important parts of the game that shall remain nameless. Overall, I think people put it a little bit too high on a pedestal. It's a very digestible game. It's good for a large amount of audiences, but it's just, it's not amazing. It's not wonderful. It's, but it's kind of like, hey, this is what we're going to get. And we're getting a, a pretty okay, okay product. I'll take solid and streamlined over bad and faithful. For number three, we have Battlefleet Gothic one and two. Now, yeah, this game a lot seems of these awesome. I haven't played a ton of. I'll be totally honest because this kind of gameplay style isn't entirely my cup of tea. That being said, I am getting a lot of this recommendation via osmosis and asking various other Warhammer fans what they thought of the games. Personally, 2 sticks out the most because it opens with one of the biggest events in Warhammer history, which is the Fall of Cadia. Naturally, as a big guard player myself, the Fall of Cadia is probably my favorite like event in the Warhammer history. It, it kind of has like the Avengers Endgame feel to it, where, you know, if you go watch Endgame, we can probably all agree that Endgame isn't quite as good as Infinity War, but everyone's here it's a big collaboration and because of that it feels very exciting and fun even if it's not perfectly well told it's still very enjoyable that's basically what the fall of Cadia is it has everything you've got saint celestine bell i was gonna say it's kind of like the fall of reach in, in halo but then i was like no nah, not really because like the fall of reach is like i feel like it's so much more important to the halo lore in general um at least the lore of the humans in the unsc than the fall of Cadia is in Warhammer, so it's probably not a very good, uh, you know, a very good analogy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I would compare it to in Halo. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't really think of anything. Darius Call, uh, Lord Castellan Creed, as well as a whole bunch of other major characters like Abaddon the Spoiler, Tor Garadon, the Imperial Fists, and let's not forget the resurrection of Rowboat Gurlaman with the help of Yvrain, and a mysterious man known as Trazen the Infinite, which almost saved Cadia, which is a huge turn of events. Everyone was there, and it's a very exciting story, even if it's not always the best written. But it opens with that, and the cinematics for it are really good. The music, the narrator, just is fantastic. And for every one of those 10,000 years, the fortress world of Cadia has held the gate closed. An adamantium bastion, granted strength by flesh and bone and seeded purpose by faith in the Emperor's holy light. It's hilarious to hear her name off the, the warship vessel of the orcs, the Mordaka Prime, which is a completely straight face. Survivors from the rechristened Mordaka Prime. Overall, I'd say the story, especially the voice acting, is really good. In fact, that's a major point we'll talk about later is voice acting, because my final two games are also really good on that as well. However, this game is not about your average... So, so can you play as multiple factions in this, or can you only play as the Imperium of Man? Because it seems like every bit of gameplay footage I've seen is somebody playing as the Imperium of Man. I think I watched uh, two reviews on it and a, some gameplay footage. So can you play as other factions, or is it always just the Imperium of Man? Warhammer stuff. It's not about little dudes on the battlefield. This is a, a naval fleet battle, which I would say does go a little bit underappreciated. The naval battles of the 41st millennium are very important, and they have these giant gothic spire ships for the Imperium. You've got the creepy Necron stuff, the high fleets of the Tyranids, the jumbled together mess that is orc war vehicles. Oh, it's very interesting to see this thing kind of fleshed out more. You must the be able to play as multiple however, then. It's much more of a tactical, slow paced thing. About yeah, here's somebody playing as the Necron, I think. All that kind of attack formations and things like that that I'm not overly interested in. However, the music, the voice acting, and also the large swath of people you can play as between the Necrons and the, and the Imperium. And okay, so you definitely can. Does really make it... A but yeah, the music in Warhammer games, I've noticed uh, after watching like a lot of gameplay and a lot of, a lot of trailers and shit, is fucking fantastic. That mix of like gothic choir music mixed with like you know dubstep and techno and all this other it's so good that like uh it's just, i don't know if there's like a you know a subgenre for whatever it's called but it is so fucking good a, a good recommendation i'd argue and everyone tells me it's also a wonderful game so i wanted to go ahead and mention it because there aren't many great warhammer games and i do feel like this one in particular does deserve a recommendation Moving on over for number two, we have the Dawn of War games. Now I decided to combine yeah, the these two ones look amazing. one slot because they're both the same group, and honestly, they're both kind of the same game. Wait, how Dawn of War? Is that, aren't there three of them? I know, well, I know there are now, but when did Dawn of War three come out? Twenty seventeen. So yeah, Dawn of War three was already out when this was released. All right. It, with some adjustments. Dawn of War is an RTS style game, and it probably is the game genre that fits the Warhammer universe the best. It's a lot easier to balance out the insanity of all the different kinds of units when you have something like an RTS that allows you to do that, as opposed to, say, a first-person shooter or something. Now, Dawn of War 1 is uh, showing its age a little bit right now, but so are a lot of these games. Um, and it's a more traditional RTS. You start off with commands, and you have workers, and you create all these different kinds of structures that provide to you resources, and that allows you to build units, go capture stuff, kill the enemy. Pretty standard RTS fare. Uh, it also boasts a pretty huge selection of armies. Everything. So you got Chaos, Dark Eldar, Eldar, Imperial Guard, Necrons, Orcs, Sisters of Battle, Space Marines, Tau, Random. Uh, so... I'm surprised that they called them races, because, like, half of these, like, the Imperial Guards, the Battle Space Marines are all technically together. The Dark Elder and Elder, I mean, I guess they're, they're two different factions, but technically the same race. Necrons and Orcs and the Tau are kind of different races. Well, I mean, these two definitely are. The Tau is kind of, but they, they have humans within them, apparently. From the Guard to the Necrons to the Orcs, and, and then you have the Sisters, and there's a nice combination. 
For Dawn of War 2, however, it's still an RTS, but it's a lot more of a squad-based tactics game. There's no base building of any kind, and instead you control a major hero that can be revived, and you start building out different kinds of units and tech trees as you unlock more and more by capturing requisition points and trying to win in, in like a hold the objective style game, which I think does translate well now that we're in 9th edition Warhammer, and objective control is the major point of that game as well. Dawn of War 2 still looks in incredible. It's like, mwah, it looks beautiful. I love the animations. I love the color scheme. It's got a little more bloom, but I don't know. I don't really mind that. And it's really nice to see all the different sound effects and the voice acting. And the voice act, the voice acting of Dawn of War 1 and 2 is so stupidly over the top. It's so bombastically ridiculous that I cannot imagine it being anything else. If it was in any other game, it wouldn't work. But when you've got voice acting like this, it's fantastic. Orcs. Where is one? There's a hundred of them. Come, show me what passes for fury among your misbegotten kind. <laughs> Witness your doom! Do the deaths of your soldiers mean so little to you? Are you with that mad? Do the deaths of yours mean so much to you, alien? Are you that weak? Our oh. task here is too important to let one such as you derail it. <gasps> Did you say something, Eldar? I couldn't hear for all that hot air you was blowing. <laughs> infantilism is boundless, Orc. And she still won't shut it. <laughs> you have made quite a name for yourself looting the petty lords of this subsector. You have also been known as a mercenary under their employ. I? What's that to you? Are oh, you kicking your boys here? You're one of those I love the fucking orcs, man. type thingies. I thought yous were more for killing orcs than paying them. I like your hat, by the way. And I really do think it's one of the biggest highlights of it, because it really puts you in that universe. And you combine the really good music, it's wonderful. They both also have a wonderful modding scene as well. Dawn of War 1 has the Ultimate Apocalypse mod, which is basically like, hey, okay, in the game you had the Bane Blade, now you've got 14 Bane Blades. You've got the Hellhammer, the Shadow Sword, etc. Now you can have Emperor Titans and Imperial Knights. You can now build uh, Death Strike nuclear missiles, and uh, the Tyranids are in there. Here's your Hierophant Bio Titan. Here's your Orc Stompa. You can just build this insane amount of units, and it's way more fleshed out in the actual lore, so you can get grab basically anything you want. Whereas there's also a mod for Dawn of War 2 called, I believe, the Elite Bomb that I found out because I was watching a guy named Indrid Casts. He casts Dawn of War 2 like pro matches, which I think is really interesting because you have these like 3v3 battles with all these different factions and some factions that I don't believe were actually in the game originally either. And they're a lot more fleshed out. They had a lot more intrigue and interest. And it, it really is nice to watch, actually. It's surprisingly deep. For a game like that with the cover system and how you move characters and their special abilities it's impressive in fact dawn of war one actually has a pretty fantastic campaign in fact almost all the expansion packs have fantastic campaigns besides one of them dawn of war two has some decent campaign moments but dawn of war one is really the good shit all right it has some really good characters it has some really nice campaign moments. i'm surprised he's not talking about dawn of war three at all because the this video maybe this he reposted this but when he well no he couldn't have because i think when did Armada come out? Uh, Warhammer 40k Armada. Keep spelling Armada wrong. Um, yeah, so Armada was only... Wait, that's that's Armada 2. That, that, that's, yeah, so Armada 1. Oh, yeah, so... Yeah, Dawn of War 3 had been out for two years before Armada 2 came out. So Armada 2 was definitely out by the time... Or Dawn of War 3 was definitely out by the time this came out. So does he just not know about it, or does he just not like it? And he's just like, yeah, just ignore the third one, play the first two. Because this video is two years old, so it was made probably 2021, maybe 2020. And, and yeah, Warhammer, like, uh, at that point, Battle... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Dawn of War uh, 3 had been out for four years three to four years moments and it is 
by far worth playing. If you're curious about either of these games, I would recommend watching the Dawn of War 1 Ultimate Apocalypse review by Mandalore Gaming, or checking out Injured Casts for those Dawn of War 2 games as well. See which one's more your style. I think we will be watching the Dawn of War 1 uh, review. I've already watched the 2 review from Mandalore. Um, somebody said I should also check out his 1 review, so I'll check that out as well. Have it on the list. I like the look and the feel of Dawn of War 2 better, but I do enjoy the gameplay, like the more traditional RTS of Dawn of War 1, so I'm a little bit back and forth. But both games are pretty much the epitome of Warhammer content to cover multiple factions, lots of different units, and get the most inclusive Warhammer game in terms of all the variety as you possibly can. Finally, last but not least, we have Warhammer Mechanicus. I would argue Mechanicus is the best Warhammer game currently on the market right now. It is number one. The only reason you might consider Dawn of War better is because it has more of the things you might want. Mechanicus is much more streamlined. You play as the Adeptus Mechanicus, and you are an Archmagos, Arch, Archmagos, I don't know how it's pronounced, Magos, and you have stumbled upon a Necron tomb world. And your job, go look at it, purify it, exterminate it, do whatever you can and finish off the Necrons before they all wake up and you gotta get the hell out of there. If I were to tell you a bullet point list of what makes it great, I can imagine all of you thinking to yourself, oh shit, why haven't I played this yet? Well, first off, it's an XCOM style game. So you have top-down view moving your different units certain spaces and they have special hits. However, unlike XCOM, no random chance. If you can shoot it, you're gonna hit it. It's a Darkest Dungeon style game where each encounter is moving through a little bit like section of the tomb world that has different special things that you have like symbols and random encounters and the random chance kind of stuff that some people hate but it doesn't really bug me that much. Some are good, some are bad. You build a party up. You've got a class-based system to upgrade your tech priest. You can bring different other kinds of minions like servitors, cataphrons, or maybe Skatari vanguards and rangers. You've got all these different kinds of upgrades and new weapons you can unlock, and by working through yeah, this game, definitely looks sick. I've seen a couple cohort, reviews on it. You can talk to one of the characters that's really big on saving her troops. You've got one guy who's the religious aspect of the Mechanicus, who constantly like speaks sermons and crap, and then you have the really techno diddly boy, who's or is that a girl? They all represent a different part of the Mechanicus, and. It's just really impressive. And the sound design and the visuals and the music. Oh my God, the music. Yeah. Music is so good. Techno organs. And even the Necrons are, are so well fleshed out. The Necrons are Necrons. They have reanimation protocols. They have scarabs that help heal people. They have Goss and Tesla weaponry. Everything from your teeny little Canoptic Scarab to your Triarch Praetorian and a Destroyer Lord. There are some scary, scary stuff in that goddamn tomb. And the Necrons do not fuck around. And in fact, in a weird way, it actually provides my favorite parts of the game, which is the voice acting. Oh yeah, these guys speak in robot. <clears throat> now, for your main cohort, you don't have voice acting. You have, like, I feel bad calling it gibberish because it's obviously way cooler than gibberish, but it's some kind of, like, I don't know, low gothic binary speaking or something. But that gives it not only saves money on voice acting, but it has its own really nice flavor to it. But then... Soon you realize that the Necrons actually do have voice acting. The major Necron characters speak English. Yeah, which I thought was hilarious. I, remember when I, was, I think I was watching Mandalore's review on this, maybe. Might have been somebody else's. It was either Thunderstriker or Mandalore's review. And I when I saw this, I thought it was funny as hell. It's like, okay, this, so the humans, well, humans, I mean, they're fucking like augmented cyborg people um, from Mars, speak in fucking binary code and can't speak English. But somehow the Necrons speak fucking English. What virtue do your kind have that makes you The British Empire stops for no one, not even space. 
And that got me thinking a little bit. I'm like, the Mechanicus believe that flesh is weak, and they strip themselves of it the best they possibly can in order to, you know, transcend, to, to remove their weakness and everything from their actual flesh to even their mind. The Necrons were dragged into biotransference against their will and became robotic slaves. And they're the ones that speak English. In, in a, so, uh, weren't they tricked into it? Didn't they want immortality and they got tricked into immortality through this, but then they ended up getting enslaved? Odd turn of fate, the Mechanicus, because they don't speak English, are more alien than the Necrons are. Yeah. Which I just think is so fucking cool. If I had to have any downsides to the Mechanicus, that's one way to look it's at it. that the opening is a bit too hard and the ending is a bit too easy. The opening can be pretty brutal, and then as you get going, it becomes a little bit too easy, and you start to steamroll. Honestly, it's an incredibly good game. It's the best Warhammer game on the market. Yeah, that was something I heard from, uh, I can't, again, I can't remember if it was uh, Thunderstriker or Mandalorian, Mandalore Gaming, but they were saying the same thing. They had to purposely nerf themselves to make it hard, because if you actually tried to, like, min-max in any way, you would just be blasting through stuff by the end of the game, because you could make, like, some busted-ass classes. It, both in terms of polish, uh, being very faithful to the lore, and having great intrigue and design. Everyone should play it. Even if you don't care about Admech and Necrons, everyone should play it. I love it. Go check it out. Okay, and that's it for me. This has been five Warhammer games that I think you should really check out. This has been also some media. Definitely watch Event Horizon and Astartes if you haven't already. Those are such good little pieces of work. And text-to-speech is a little more of a commitment, but God damn it, it's worth it for the memes alone. All the games. So yeah, um, definitely enjoyed this video. Um, it was kind of interesting though how like it's top five uh, games in media. The media he only showed three of which none of them were official Warhammer stuff. Right, you had the Astartes, which is I, I that's amazing. I, I watched that I think it was last week. So fucking good. Probably the best fan animation of any series I've ever seen. Like uh, the 40k fan animations are just amazing. I actually just watched. The Varks one, which is another fan animation. I watched it earlier today, and it was also amazing. And the Warhammer 40k fan animations are so fucking good. Event Horizon was just, I mean, a, a weird one. Um, I, I've never seen that movie, so maybe it, it really does fit with the Warhammer theme. Uh, I guess it kind of does. You know, it's in space and stuff, but that's, again, not Warhammer. And then uh, text-to-speech, I've seen, I think, the first six or seven, maybe eight episodes. Uh We'll, we'll continue to be reacting to those throughout the weeks. And, yeah, it's it's hilarious. But it, it was kind of funny that, you know, the top five video only has three for one. And then out of those, one is literally not Warhammer and the other two are fan-made. Which just shows how abysmal their media is, I guess. Uh, as for the games, Space Hulk Deathwing, I've literally never heard of. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. Um, so I might have to look more into that. Um, Space Marine... He seems to not like it too much, but everyone else that I've heard talk about it really likes it. Uh, I think they have a sequel on Space Marine 2. I'm not sure if it's out yet or if it's about to come out, but I watched the trailer for that, and that looks amazing as well. Um, Battlefleet Gothic looks fucking amazing. I love RTS games. I've never played an RTS game like that where you're kind of doing, like, space battles and shit. I mean, I guess kind of... Uh, oh, what's it called? Um... It was the one old Star Wars game, like, way back in the day where you kind of do it. But it's obviously not as, like, it's got to be 20 years old now. So it's obviously not nearly as advanced as Battlefleet Gothic. Dawn of War, he completely forgot about the third game or just doesn't like it and decided not to include it in his Dawn of War part. Um, but those games definitely look amazing. Very much like StarCraft. Excited to play that. And then Mechanicus. The music in Mechanicus, and I haven't even played this game yet, but, like, just all the trailers I've watched and, like, just hearing the music in the background, it sounds so fucking good that, like gothic cathedral music mixed with like dubstep techno electronic whatever you want to call it so fucking good I, like honestly i gotta make a playlist that's just songs from that game it sounds so fucking good but anyway let me know what you think below like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one